When it comes to achieving universal health coverage, timely and accurate diagnosis is key. For many countries though, health systems are fragile and access to diagnostics remains the weakest link. Only 1% of primary healthcare clinics and 14% of hospitals in low and middle income countries have even the most basic diagnostic capacity. Globally, 3 million out of 10 million TB patients are missed and 1 in 3 of HIV exposed infants do not receive a test. And the pandemic has only highlighted the global inequity of diagnostics with COVID-19 testing rates more than 10 times lower than high-income countries. So how do we fix this? By increasing investments and making the best use of limited resources to build an integrated and patient-centric network of diagnostic services, a system that has adequate testing capacity based on local context and needs to deliver accurate, accessible and timely test results at sustainable costs. But the data needed for planning diagnostics services comes in all shapes and sizes, which can be a big challenge. Diagnostic network optimization uses data analytics to combine these complex data inputs to help you see the bigger picture of your diagnostic services. Using DNO, you can identify gaps and compare solutions to improve access to services in the most cost-efficient way. Software applications simplify this by automating data analysis and building maps and charts to visually represent findings. Later in the video, we will explore one such tool, OptiDX, which is an open access, web-based, user-friendly software solution for planning and analyzing diagnostic services. Now let's see how DNO typically works. The first step is to define the overall scope and priority questions for the analysis. This involves ministries of health coordinating efforts of all relevant stakeholders along the whole process. The next step is to collate and prepare data to build a digital model of the current diagnostic services. With this, you'd be able to assess, for example, how much testing capacity is available, where are the testing facilities located, how well utilized is the available capacity to meet the testing demand and where the gaps lie. You can then run various scenarios to compare potential outcomes and costs of alternative solutions to address gaps in services. For example, improving utilization of available devices through better sample referral or integrated multi-disease testing or increasing testing capacity by introducing a new test or device. DNO empowers countries to get a comprehensive picture of current diagnostic systems, identify gaps and opportunities to strengthen diagnostics, Compare trade-offs between access, efficiency and cost for potential interventions. This means more patients get timely and accurate tests, while health systems become more efficient at delivering services and prioritize investments that deliver greatest impact. DNO works best when integrated into strategic planning. This is easier when you have a digital model of your diagnostic services at hand that can be updated when needed. Let's look now at how OptiDX puts the power of DNO in your hands. OptiDX is an open access web-based disease agnostic tool designed for diagnostic networks in low and middle income countries. It helps build an adaptable digital model of your diagnostic network with a user-friendly, highly visual interface. It offers a host of optimization options based on industry best practice in supply chain analytics. What's better? You don't need to be a network analytics expert to use OptiDX and it is free of any license costs. You can get started with a simple registration process, defining the scope of your DNO analysis and identifying data sources and you are good to go. Follow these steps to help you set up and analyze your diagnostic network model with OptiDX. The first step in creating a network model in OptiDX is to compile and prepare data. There are two Excel-based data templates that help you do this. Firstly, the scenario creation template. This template can be downloaded from OptiDX and helps collate the various data elements required, such as testing demand, location of health facilities and laboratories or testing sites, and information on the type of services offered location and capacity of diagnostic devices, device test combinations, and sample referral linkages. Secondly, the costing template. This template is pre-populated with costs for common test types, but can be modified and new tests added. 
the cost per test is calculated, fed into the scenario creation template and uploaded into OptiDX. Once you have the data in place, here is the landing page where you can navigate to different parts of the OptiDX tool to create a new country model, build scenarios and review outputs. To create a new country model, we will use the data templates we just looked at and upload them into OptiDX here via this step-by-step -step process. Once loaded, click on Run Country Baseline to create a preliminary model of your network. Next, to review the preliminary baseline model, you can move to the Country Navigation screen. Here you can review current state network, change the network to refine the baseline model or build optimized models or compare network outputs. You can get an overall sense of the network using the Summary tab or use other options such as Review Locations, Analyze Testing Capacity or Map Referral Linkages. Next, using Change the Network, you can model the impact of various changes. We can make changes to the network related to transportation. For example, we might want to assess what would it take for every facility to be within 30 kilometers from the closest testing site. To do this, here we can set maximum allowable distance between health facilities and labs or assess the effect of allowing health facilities to refer samples to another district or to another region, province or county. Here we can test out cross-border referrals and see if that helps improve turnaround time and reduces costs and we can adjust sample transport frequency and mode of transport. We can also make testing changes, changing costs, device capacities and test device combinations, including or excluding private sector labs. Finally, with the Location Changes option, you can add new devices at existing locations and also add new labs, facilities or hubs to your network. Let's take an example. Here is a country with a network of point-of-care molecular diagnostic devices that conduct testing for TB and centralized PCR devices that perform HIV testing for viral load VL and early infant diagnostics EID. Total cost of operating the network is 1.3 billion in local currency. Just over 172,000 rapid molecular TB tests, 176,000 HIV VL tests and 75,000 HIV EID tests are performed overall. Average distance from health facilities to labs is 68 kilometers and it takes about an hour on average. Average device utilization in the network is 32% and no device is currently over capacity, which means there is adequate capacity in the network to meet test demand. You can move through the location tab to see where the labs, health facilities and hubs are located in this country. The capacity tab to see what proportion of the overall testing capacity is being utilized and view existing referral linkages between health facilities, hubs and labs under referral linkages. You can view this information at a national level through maps, charts and tables or you can drill down to see facility locations or utilization information by region also known as admin1 and see which tests are being performed on which devices. After looking at the summary results at an overall network level, exploring results at a more granular level shows us that device utilization varies widely by regions from 11% to 77% and service distance also varies across different regions within the country from 18 km to 192 km. We can see service distance by test types and note here that HIV samples are traveling much further compared to TB. Average service distance is 105 kilometers for referring HIV EID samples and 23 kilometers for referring TB samples. The majority of the samples traveling over 50 kilometers are for HIV VL and EID, leading to long turnaround times. These granular insights are critical to get a good understanding of gaps in current diagnostic services and how they might be addressed. Now here is a question. The Ministry of Health in this country would like to expedite access to EID testing to ensure rapid results and treatment initiation in HIV-exposed infants. As a solution, they'd like to reduce the long distances over which samples are being referred and try to conduct EID on the existing gene expert devices which are generally located closer to patients. 
but they'd first need to understand whether point of care capacity is adequate and what would be the impact of integration in terms of costs and service distance. Also, would there be any negative impact on TB testing? Let's see how OptiDX helps answer this. We'll build two main scenarios where EID testing is shifted completely to point of care devices and where EID testing can be conducted on point of care and centralized PCR devices. We go to make changes to a scenario tab and restrict EID testing to point of care devices using change test device mapping. To build the second scenario using this tab, we allow the model to open the PCR and point of care devices for EID testing as testing on centralized PCR devices is cheaper than point of care. Purely based on cost minimization, the optimized model would still send samples to centralized PCR devices located much further than point of care devices. But as the country is interested to reduce service distance for sample referral, next, we go here to apply a maximum service distance constraint for sample referral. This makes the model consider a balance of reducing distances and minimizing costs when recommending where samples should be referred to. Let's move to compare network outputs and browse through the options available. Here you can use the high-level summary to compare costs, service distance, testing demand met, and average device utilization across all scenarios at the overall network level. This can help identify promising scenarios that can be of relatively greater interest for implementation. To look a bit deeper between any two scenarios, you can go to the Scenario Comparison dashboard. Here, you can see the breakdown of total costs into separate cost headers. See which sites are going over capacity or those sending samples over maximum allowable distance. And then you can look individually into the scenarios that sound promising using the detailed scenario review to further compare by disaggregated outputs. For example, under transportation, look at service distance by test type in each scenario. Let's see how the three network options compare on service distance, costs and device utilization in our example. Here you can see the number of HIV EID samples being referred by the distance bands at baseline when HIV EID demand shifts entirely to point of care, when HIV EID demand is met by a mix of point of care and centralized PCR devices. When EID shifts completely to point of care, many more samples can be tested within 10 kilometers, possibly reducing turnaround times. Here, only 3,000 samples move over 50 kilometers, much less than in the other two options. Overall average service distance for HIV EID can be reduced drastically from 100 kilometers at baseline to 31 kilometers on PCR and point of care scenario and 18 kilometers in point of care only scenario without impacting the service distance 4TB which stays at 23 kilometers, meaning faster delivery of EID test results is possible. Total cost of operating the network increases marginally when EID testing is conducted exclusively on point of care devices. Also, there is adequate capacity in the network to support HIV EID testing on point of care devices and no devices go over capacity. Even with the reduced service distances overall and adequate testing capacity overall, there are regions with longer transport lanes going above 100 kilometers. To improve turnaround time in these regions, ministries of health can also model the impact of placing additional point-of-care devices in these hard-to-reach areas. To do this, we can run a scenario to allow the model to consider adding additional devices. We can allow the model to choose from a defined set of candidate health facility locations. We also have the option to direct the model to place devices at defined locations if needed. Once we run this scenario, in the location view, we can see potential sites where addition of new devices can be considered to reduce long distances. Ministries of Health can use outputs such as this from OptiDX to identify the most suitable approach for expediting HIV EID. In doing so, they will need to consider questions such as, does the service distance in mixed point of care and PCR options enable adequate turnaround times for HIV EID? What would be the staffing and budget needs to conduct additional HIV EID testing at point-of-care sites? 
How is demand for TB, HIV and other tests expected to change in the future? We know that good network configuration is a combination of many factors, which is why OptiDX helps you evaluate the different options and identify the best fit solution for your network. This is just an introduction to what OptiDX can do. There are many more options that can help you answer the particular questions most relevant to your own setting. Learn more at OptiDX.org and let your journey begin. OptiDX, bringing the power of data to diagnostic network planning.